Ryomen Sukuna, the King of Curses. Whatever your opinion on JJK's story, you can't deny that Sukuna is a captivating character. Born during the Heian period, where sorcerers and curses fought with no restraint, the one man who rose to become strongest in history. That's a cool character, with enough mystery to become a great villain. But what if I told you that the real Sukuna wasn't even a villain? That all the legends told about him were due to some sinister plot where people wanted to deface his name. Let me take you down a little journey through history. Long ago, there was a monster that ravaged the city of Hida and looted the innocent. With four arms, four legs, and two faces, Ryomen Sukuna caused all the people to cower in fear, until one day, Emperor Nintoku commanded Shogun Takefura Kuma to defeat this monster. After an intense battle that decimated his army, the Shogun stood victorious, defeating the two-faced beast and bringing peace back to Hida. This is what was written in the Chronicles of Japan, aka the Nihon Shoki, which is a compilation of Japan's history. It tells the tale of every recorded emperor of Japan up until the 8th century. Now, these chronicles do a great job of recording the dynasty of the emperor, but unsurprisingly, Japan wasn't ruled by just one emperor. For a significant part of its history, Japan had several warlords, each ruling their own provinces and peoples. Most warlords just wanted to chill, so when a bigger warlord asked them to join in an alliance, they agreed. And the warlord that owned the most land became known as the emperor. But not every leader necessarily accepted the rule of this emperor, and this is where we find Ryomen Sukuna. According to the Nihon Shoki, Sukuna was a demonic ruler to Hida, but if we look at Hida's history books, we see a different story. Over there, Sukuna is seen as a divine protector. It's even part of their tradition to worship Sukuna. This is his origin story according to them. During the reign of Emperor Nintoku, in a mountain along the outskirts of Hida, there was a great noise that caused the rock wall to collapse, leaving behind a rock cave. From within the cave, a six meter tall, two faced, four handed, four legged, double sided Sukuna with a broad axe in hand suddenly emerged. The villagers who were working in these mountain fields were greatly frightened and tried to run away. Then Sukuna announced in a loud voice, Don't be afraid. I have appeared in this world because this is a time of great importance for the protection of Buddhism and the law of kings. As the villagers fled, a man stopped and prostrated himself before Sukuna. Bowing his head, he said, I want to submit myself to the life of the Venerable One. I would like to welcome your eminence, but your body is too large to be invited into our small house. In response to this, Sukuna made a sign with his hands and suddenly transformed into a small kanon. The man returned to his village with the deity in his arms, entertained it, and built a shrine to serve him. Now, there's a little problem with the story. The recorded death of Sukuna was somewhere during the 4th century, estimations say around 377, but Buddhism was only introduced into Japan during the 6th century, specifically the year 5. Japan didn't know Buddhism existed before this point, but the people of Hida claimed Sukuna was a Buddhist deity that they worshipped 150 years before Buddhism was ever introduced. It feels like there's a bit of retconning going on here. To explain this inconsistency, we need to learn a bit about the city of Hida. Located at the top of the Gifu prefecture, Hira is a city surrounded by dense forest, and at the time, they were located far away from the capital. It turns out, if you want to expand a nation, a large supply of wood becomes very useful, and Hira was well known for the expert woodworkers, who went on to make several temples under the command of the emperor. So, Emperor Nintoku, who ruled Japan across the 4th century, had a motive to overthrow Sukuna, who was the leader of Hida at the time. Let's talk about Shogun Takefuru Kuma, the man that would go on to defeat Ryomen Sukuna. Just like Sukuna, there's not that many records of Takefurukuma in history. According to some of Sukuna's legend, Takefurukuma served Empress Jingu, a female empress of Japan that lived for a hundred years. He was a member of the Kaifu clan, a clan that was said to be descendant of Ame no Hoakari, the Japanese god of fire and agriculture. He's also considered to be an ancestor of the Wani clan, a clan said to be related to the Wani sea monster which ravaged sailors for generations. Descendant of a fire god and ancestor to an ocean monster, he must have had quite the genetics. At the time, it was thought that if the emperor married women of the Wani clan, he would gain control of the sea. This feels like something I'd read in a shonen manga. Fun fact, Wani just means crocodile, so the Wani dragon was probably just a big breed of crocodiles that scared fishermen in the early centuries. From what little we know historically, Takefuru Kuma was a real shogun that worked under the emperor's command back in the late 3rd century to 4th century, barely making it plausible that he was shogun when Sukuna reigned over Hida in the 4th century. But for all this to make sense, he would have had to have been old, 
at least in his late 50s to make sense of him serving Empress Jingu and still being Shogun during the reign of Emperor Nintoku. Depending on which numbers you use, Takefura Kuma would have to have been over 120 years old when he fought Tsukuna, which doesn't make sense no matter how divine his blood was. For the sake of the story, let's assume he was in his 50s and move on to see how the battle played out according to Hida. The Yamato court issued an order to subdue Ryomen Sukuna for not pledging allegiance to the emperor, so they asked the wise shogun, Takefuru Kuma, to do the deed. Ryomen Sukuna, who somehow knew they were coming, perhaps due to his divine Buddhist powers, went out into the mountainside to prepare for battle. Then he ate some hot pot with the farmers as they talked about the harvest. I'm not kidding, the stone he ate hot pot on is being preserved in a temple in Yukawa. After chanting protective incantations for 37 days to benefit the people's harvest, he saw Takefuru Kuma army approaching and knew it was time to battle. With a large axe in his left, sword in his right, and a bow and arrow in his other left and other right, he braced for a fierce battle. Kaplow! Sukuna attacks with an intense might, stopping Takefuru Kuma's army from advancing. Flying like a butterfly and stinging like a bee, Sukuna showed off his endless versatility to Takefuru Kuma, who looked in amazement at a worthy foe. Samurai collapsed left and right, However, the protracted fight fell in Takefuru Kuma's favour, the wise samurai knowing Sukuna would eventually tire out. Realising the old man's plan, Sukuna retreated, disappearing into the mountains. A white dove flew northward, guiding the shogun's army towards Sukuna. Takefuru Kuma and his army finally looked up to Mount Norikura. Sukuna's aura oozed menacingly, a fire lit in the old soldier's eyes. The army climbed only to find a double-sided cave that Sukuna made into his stronghold. They climbed the rocky mountain, aiming for the cave, where a fierce battle then unfolded. Ryomen Sukuna, with strength equal to 50 men, threw down rocks, pulled out and threw trees, ran around with sonic speed and continued to fight. One by one, Takefuru Kuma's army fell until only Takefura Kuma himself was left. What then transpired was the greatest duel in history in front of that cavern, but in the end, Sukuna's exhaustion caught up to him. Sukuna was finally held down and tied up. Takefura Kuma, impressed by Sukuna's superhuman ability, encouraged him to surrender and obey, but Sukuna stubbornly never listened, so Takefura Kuma was forced to defeat him. Now, obviously the story isn't an accurate record of history, they're coming from temples that worship Sukuna as a Buddhist deity, but we can't be fully sure where fact turns into fiction. Since both sides described a battle between Takefura Kuma and Ryomen Sukuna, we can confirm a battle really happened, and although Sukuna lost, Takefura Kuma must have seriously respected him as a fighter to call him a monster when he returned to the capital. Today, historians believe that the legendary Ryomen Sukuna was a real person, most likely the ruler of Hida, who refused to serve Emperor Nintendo when he wanted to expand his control over Japan. What people theorise though, is that after his death at the hands of Takefuru Kuma, the people of Hida were forced into harsh labour. It's common knowledge that the people of Hida went on to build several temples under the command of the Emperor. This may have caused the people to build a resentment towards the Emperor, and in turn, a fondness towards their old leader, whom they had begun to forget over the generations. So. To never forget Sukuna, they started meshing his life with aspects of the Buddhist religion they interacted with every day, turning what was once a noble leader into a divine protector. Some people theorise that Sukuna was actually a pair of brothers, each so adept at fighting you'd think they were a single person. That might have explained the four limbs, four legs, and two faces. More recently, there was an urban legend that floated around the internet, saying that Sukuna's form was due to him having fused with his twin brother in the womb. The author of JJK admits that this urban legend is what inspired him to make his version of Sukuna. There are even some texts that imply Ryomen Sukuna was actually a clan of people that reigned over Hida, not just a single person. The legend of Ryomen Sukuna seemed to have been formed around the people's growing disdain towards the emperor's rule. Combining his legend with Buddhist symbols and making shrines, in a way, immortalized him to the people. And funnily enough, his legend did eventually outlast the people who defeated him. I don't see any Nintokus floating around as iconic villains, although I'd like to see a Takefuru Kuma adaptation in some way. That name's just way too cool to forget. Takefuru Kuma. The cave where Sukuna is said to have emerged from is now named after him, as well as the rock where he had hot pot. They even named a pumpkin after him. I don't know how this relates to Sukuna's story, but if I ever make enough money to visit Japan, I'll make sure to go eat a Sukuna pumpkin. I wonder what it tastes like. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. That's the only way I know this stuff's worth making. And I know that this is cringe, but let me say one last thing. Thank you for listening to this story. Okay, bye.